Hello friends. Now we are studying our third method of measurement of high DC voltage. The name of the method is generating voltmeter. It means there is need to have some generator which generates that high voltage, high DC voltage, which can be measured with the help of voltmeter. So high voltage measuring devices employ the generating principle and that is called as the direct connection that is called as the generating voltmeter. Now what is the purpose of using this generating voltmeter? It is given here when we have or when we have to avoid the direct connection of high DC voltage to the source, we can use this generating voltmeter. So this generating voltmeter avoids the direct connection of the high voltage source to the voltage measurement or the voltmeter. The principle which is employed here is very simple. A generating voltmeter is a variable capacitor and it is electrostatic voltage generator. So it is a variable capacitor, but electrostatic voltage generator means the static electrical energy is generated, which generates the current that is proportional to the applied external voltage. The device is driven by an external synchronous motor. Now that synchronous motor is a constant speed motor. So when this constant motor, constant speed motor drives this electrostatic or we can say the, uh, the variable capacitor, the measurement can be done. So this is what the principle which is used. Now let us understand the principle operation of this generating voltmeter. A charge is stored in a capacitor of capacitance C that is given by the equation Q is equal to C into V. If the capacitance of the capacitor varies with the time, when connected to the source voltage V, the current through the capacitor is, that current can be given by I is equal to dQ by dt. But as Q is equal to C into V, by putting this equation, we get d by dt. It means the very time varying quantity and hence we get the equation as C dV by dt plus V dc by dt. But as we are going to measure the dc voltage which is constant at for constant at all the time at all the instant therefore the time varying quantity voltage is zero. So here we can mention that for DC voltage measurement dV by dt is equal to zero as this dV by dt term is the time varying voltage quantity and for this DC voltage measurement it is equal to zero. Now if it is so then I can be written as V dc by dt. Now the capacitance is going to vary between the initial value. So C is going to be varied from initial value of C0 to Cm sinusoidal. And therefore that C can be written as C0 plus Cm sine of omega t. Omega t is the term across which that variation of the sinusoidal quantity done. Now why we are saying sinusoidal? Because here the voltmeter which we are using is connected to the circuit. But yes, that voltmeter is going to measure the DC voltage. Voltmeter is going to measure the DC voltage, but the generation of the voltage is AC. Generator is generating AC voltage. So I think all of you understood what we have to do in between. In between this generation and the measurement, we have to convert this AC quantity into DC with the help of diode. 
So this AC to DC is done with the help of diode that is to be used in this particular case. As generator is time changing, which is already set because the current quantity is time changing. So that generator will generate the alternating current that is alternating circuit, but it is to be converted into the DC for the measurement of DC voltage, which is going to be measured by the voltmeter. Now differentiate this C quantity, which is varying from C0 to CM sine omega t, what we get is V d by dt of C0 plus Cm sine of omega t. Now differentiate this term, we get, now the C0 is the initial capacitance, which is zero, that is the derivative of that is zero. And for the next quantity, that is derivative of sine of omega t is cos of omega t. And derivative of omega t is omega, therefore it is multiplied by omega. So now if I just multiply this term by voltage, what I get is V multiplied by omega into Cm into cos of omega T. That is the value of current I. So this current I is given by the equation V into omega into Cm into cos of omega T. Now I just write this as I is equal to I m into cos of omega t. Now what you can say, I m is equal to V into omega into C m. This is nothing but the maximum value of current. Now RMS value of current can be written as, so I just say I RMS. Now there is a relationship between RMS quantity and peak value or maximum value that RMS is equal to I RMS is equal to I am upon root two. Now I am is equal to V omega CM that is divided by root two. So what is the value of RMS current? In this case, I RMS is equal to V into CM into omega divided by root two. Now for a constant angular frequency. Now, what is that constant angular frequency? It is omega. So if omega is constant, what we can say that I RMS is proportional to the supply voltage. More often that generated current that is I RMS is rectified. It is to be rectified and measured by the moving coil meter. So the meter which is going to be used is permanent magnet moving coil meter for the measurement of voltage. But that, that particular current is to be rectified. So let us check the diagram. So this is that diagram where S3 is the high voltage terminal or high voltage electrode and S0 is the rotor. S0 is the rotor. Now in between that rotor and high DC voltage, that is this S3, we have a gap and it is rotating, that rotor is rotating, which is placed on the shaft of the motor. This motor is a constant speed motor. That motor is a constant speed motor called as synchronous motor or any other constant speed motor that can be used. So generating voltmeter employs the rotating sector or when. So here we do have the when S1 and X2 that those are the fixed electrodes. S1 and S2 be the fixed electrodes. But we have S0 which is rotating. So this effect, fixed electrode and high voltage electrode gives us the capacitance effect. The high voltage source is connected to the disk 
electrode that is S3, which is kept at a fixed distance on the axis of the other low voltage electrodes as S0, which is rotating, S1 and S2, which are fixed electrodes. The rotor speed S0 is driven at a constant speed by the motor with a speed of 1500 RPM, maybe 1800 RPM, 3000 RPM or 3600 RPM. The rotor when S0 cause the periodic change because as that S0 rotates, so you can see here, this S0, the construction of this S0 rotor is of this kind. So the, this portion, the dark portion indicates it is a when. This is high voltage electrode, that is S3, S3, where the voltage is to be given. So this input voltage is given to this S3 electrode. Now, an uh, electric field is present. But as this S0 rotates with a speed of 1500 RPM, maybe 3000 RPM or 3600 RPM, when it rotates, it closes this white portion which is shown on S1 and then it opens. So accordingly, that electric field is cut by this open when and it is available on S2 electrode. So the rotor when S0 caused the periodic change in capacitance. So that shows the periodic change in the capacitance between the insulated disk S2 and high voltage electrode S3. So we have fixed, we have steady input voltage on S3 and S0 and S1 experiences the periodic change in the capacitance between S3 and S2. The shape and the number of the vents of S0 and S1 are so designed that they produce the sinusoidal variation in the capacitance. So what is whatever the capacitance we get, that is sinusoidal. And therefore, it is represented as C is equal to initial value of current, uh, initial value of capacitance plus Cm into sine of omega t. The generated AC voltage current, that is AC current, through the resistance R. So we get the current on S2 due to this electric field which is present between S3 and S2. So now that current which is developed here, that current is AC current. That is through R and the rectifier which is present here or a diode. That is being converted into the DC current. And this resistance, another resistance, so a series resistance in series with the microammeter is to reduce the value of that DC current, which passes through this microammeter. It means the value of the DC current is very low. And that current passes through this microammeter. That is called as a moving coil instrument. So we get the working of this generating voltage in this manner, which generates the current. And that current is going to be measured with the help of micro ammeter. S1 is the fixed electrode, which is fixed on the shaft and it is grounded. So this way we get the measurement of high DC voltage. There are certain advantages to it. There is no direct loading on the meter as it is connect. That meter is connected to low current. No direct connection to high voltage electrode. The scale is linear and that can be extended by using or by adding resistance into it. A very convenient instrument for electrostatic devices such as Van de Graaff generator or practical accelerators can be used. But there are certain limitations to it. It requires regular calibration. Careful construction is needed as the combustion instrument require an auxiliary drive. And there is a disturbance in position 
and mounting of the electrodes make the calibration invalid this third point is very very important and therefore we have to be very careful while doing the measurement so hope you understood the method of generating voltmeter where the principle which is used is a generating voltmeter that is generating principle so we'll see another method of high voltage ac measurement in next lecture so thank you so much